Hey everyone, wanted to follow up my amino acid video with a video on isoelectric uh, point and also on titration curves, um, which kind of go hand in hand. So if you haven't seen my last video on how to memorize the amino acids, it's pretty crucial to know uh, the structure of an amino acid in order to find its isoelectric point. Um, and be able to distinguish between uh, which side chain or whether the carboxy or amino terminal ends are going to deprotonate or protonate first. So over here on the left we have our list of the seven amino acids that have ionizable side chains. And by ionizable side chains I just mean that their side chain is able to protonate, uh, accept a proton, or deprotonate, give a proton away. Um, and those seven amino acids are aspartate, glutamate, histidine, cysteine, tyrosine, lysine, and arginine. And they have specific pKa values that you can see here. And those pKa values are extremely important uh, for understanding when they are going to protonate or deprotonate. So, in addition to those seven amino acids uh, with the ionizable side chain, every amino acid can have their carboxy terminal end. So we have our alpha carboxyl group which is terminal. And that, the pK associated with that is 3.0. We also have a terminal, if I can spell, terminal alpha amino group. And the pKa for that is 8. So, in general, when we are talking about isoelectric point and titration curves, we can say that for our purposes, pH is equal to pKa. So when we say the pH is 4, the pKa is also 4. Okay? So when we have a pH that is greater than the pKa, that means we have excess OH ions floating around. This means that it is going to deprotonate by it, I mean amino acid, is going to deprotonate in these conditions. When the pH is less than the pKa, we have an excess of hydrogen atoms. And in this scenario, they will protonate. So let's just jump in. So we're going to start with alanine. So alanine is not on our list of seven amino acids that have an ionizable side chain. And the reason for that is that the structure of alanine, that's a three. The structure of alanine is this. So that CH3 group there is not going to be able to protonate or deprotonate. It's just a CH3 group. However, we have this alpha carboxy terminal end, and we also have this alpha amino terminal end, right? And our alpha carboxy terminal end, the pKa for that is going to be 3.0. And the pKa over here for the alpha, or the alpha amino, yeah, is going to be 8. Okay, so those two numbers there are very important. So with our titration curve, we're going to set up a graph here. It's going to look something like this. We're going to have pH over here. And we're going to say this is approximately 2 right in there. This is going to be 7, and this will be 13. And as we move to the right here, 
on our graph. This is going to be increasing OH minus concentration. And concentration is also represented by the brackets here. So with alanine, we're going to have a curve that looks something like this. Okay? And the reason for that is that we have an alpha carboxy terminal end with a pKa of 3.0 up here in the top right. So here is approximately 3. So, and then up here we're going to have the pKa approximately 8.0. And so what we do from here is we are looking for the isoelectric point. And when we say isoelectric point, it's essentially the point where the amino acid has a net charge of zero. So like we said before, when pH is less than pKa, we have an excess of hydrogen atoms floating around. And when pH is greater than pK, we have an excess of OH ions floating around. And when we have an excess of hydrogen atoms, something's going to get protonated. And when we have an excess of hydroxyl atoms, or hydroxy ions, we're going to take a hydrogen away from something. So right down here, we're going to say this area here is a pH of 1. So for a pH of 1 right here, and I always draw stars everywhere I'm going to be drawing my amino acid. So at a pH of 1, the pH is less than the pKa, so we're going to have excess hydrogen atoms floating around. Okay, so that means that anything that can be protonated will be protonated. Okay, so that's that. And the net charge here, the COOH group is neutral, the amino group is positive, and our side chain does not matter right now. So we have a plus one charge there. Let me let me rewrite that. So this is a plus one right here. So the reason that I start at the bottom is because we know that at the bottom every point in the amino acid that can be protonated is going to be protonated. So as we move up we pass 3.0 and 3.0 is up here in the right-hand corner, associated with our alpha carboxy terminal end, okay? So if we're passing 3.0, our pH, we'll call it, we'll say that we're a P, at a pH of 6. So we're well above 3. And that means that we're going to have more... OH minus ions floating around than we did previously below 3.0. And if that happens above 3.0, we are going to deprotonate that carboxy terminal in. Okay, so now we have a net charge of zero. And if we want move up past 8.0, that means that up here, our alpha terminal amino group is also going to deprotonate. So we have a COO minus, we have an H2N because we lost a proton, and so our net charge is negative 1. So when we're looking at PI now, the isoelectric point for alanine here, it's going to be in between 8.0 and 3.0. And we can just assume that it's directly in the center of that. 
So we add 8 and 3 together and divide by 2. And we get an isoelectric point of approximately 5.5. So that's Alan. Next, I think I want to do histidine next. So histidine is one of the amino acids that is a little bit more difficult to draw. Um, it's also one of the bases. And histidine has a pKa of 6 for its side chain. And histidine looks like this. Okay, so here we have histidine, and with histidine, this side chain here, pKa 6.0, we also have this uh, carboxy terminal end with a pKa of approximately 3, and we have this amino end with a pKa of approximately 8. So, we will see something a little bit different for a titration curve in comparison with alanine. So we'll set up our curve the same way. We'll say OH is increasing that way. So with this curve, we're definitely going to have an area approximately here, pK 3.0. We also have a pKa of 6.0, so just below the 7 here, pKa of 6. And I'm setting this curve up a little bit differently this time so that you have an idea of how to set it up on your own when the curve is not given to you. So these are the pKa values that we're looking at, 3, 6, and 8. And so from there, you can just kind of draw your graph here. It's not pretty, but it works. And from here, we just start drawing in our amino acid differences in the molecule. Let me straighten this line out a little. And this is an arrow. So with histidine, because it's a little trickier to draw, I encourage you to remember your side chains, including the carboxy terminal end and the amino terminal end. So I usually start out by drawing the amino terminal. And remember, we are at a pH of a 2 down here, which is below 3.0. So our carboxy terminal end up here in the right-hand corner with a pKa of 3.0 is going to be protonated down here. So we have that protonated there. And then this is going to get a little messy. I'll try and draw it as best I can. This is where we're going to show our protonated side chain because we're below a pKa of 6. And up in the left-hand corner here, when pH is less than pKa, we have excess hydrogen atoms. When pH is greater than pKa, we have excess OH- ions floating around. So we're below a pKa of 6, which means our side chain is going to be protonated. We're below a pKa of 3, which means our carboxy terminal end is going to be protonated. And we're below a pKa of 8 for our amino terminal end, which means that that is also going to be pop, uh, protonated. So down here, we have a net charge of plus 
2. Okay? So now we go up one star, and we're above a pK of 3, so we'll say we're at a pH of 5. Okay, so this will be a pH of 5 here. We have our protonated amino terminal end because we are still below the pK of 8. We have our deprotonated carboxy terminal end because we're now above a pK of 3.0. And then we have, what do you think? I think this guy is protonated or deprotonated at this point. Well, our side chain pK is 6.0, and we're still below a pK of 6.0 at a pH of 5, so it's still protonated. Okay? But the net charge here, because our carboxy terminal end has been deprotonated, is now at a net charge of plus 1. All right? If we move up one more star, we've gone above a pK of 6 now, which means that that side chain there is going to be deprotonated. However, we're still below a pKa of 8, so our amino terminal end is going to remain protonated. So we have an H3N plus carbon, and our side chain here. And this side chain is deprotonated now, right? Because we are, we'll call it a pH of 7. So we're at pH 7 here, at this third star up from the bottom. And so we are now deprotonated on our side chain. So we, here, we are at a neutral net charge. And up here at the fourth star, we have one more amino acid to draw, and we're now above a pKa of 8, which means that since that's the highest pKa associated with histidine, the amino acid, everything is going to be deprotonated. So we have an H2N, a COO minus, and this side chain which is also deprotonated here. Okay? So up here we have a net charge of just a minus one. And so we are looking for the isoelectric point now. So for PI, we can say, okay, our neutral charge is here. And that's between a pKa of eight and six. So what we can do is say, okay, we'll add 8 and 6, the two pKa's, divide it by 2, and that gives us an isoelectric point of 7. So that's our pI. So isoelectric point titration curves are usually pretty simple to get the hang of once you completely memorize all 20 amino acids. And like I said um, back here with alanine, alanine is going to be the same protonation curve or same titration curve as all of the other amino acids that aren't one of our seven ionizable side chains. It's all going to have a similar uh, looking titration curve. And so what we did was we did histidine. So there's also aspartate, glutamate, cysteine, tyrosine, lysine, and arginine. And I think that you have the tools now 
to move on and attempt these on your own. Um, they are not anything that is going to be too difficult to comprehend. You've got your titration curve. If you have something like arginine with um, two amino groups, so arginine has the, um, it's a base, and arginine, because it is structured the way that it is, we have this carbon here, a COO minus, an H3N plus, that's a three, a hydrogen. We have a CH2 times three, which goes to an NH, which goes to a carbon. And with this type of with this type of amino acid, the titration curve is going to look a little different from what we've done already because the pKa here is 12.5. So we're going to make this 14, 7, and 1. And we're going to have a pKa of 3, a pKa of 8, and a pKa of 12.5. So pKa of 3, pKa of 8, and then 12.5 up here. So this looks a little bit differently than alanine or some of our others do. And so when you're working through this problem, you can try to do it in your head by thinking, okay, at my lowest point here, At my lowest point, below 3.0, my side chain here is going to be protonated. So down here, we have an H2N plus in the side chain. We have an H3N plus here and a COO minus, or COOH here. So down here, we have a plus two. We move up one. The COOH goes away, but we still have these two here, right? So now we're at a plus one. We go up one more, we pass eight. So we have an H2N, we have a CO minus, and we have our protonated side chain still. So now we're at neutral and up here, the side chain finally finally loses that hydrogen above 12.5 and so up here we have a net charge of minus one and so to quickly find that pi 12.5 plus 8 20.5 so that's 10.25 Okay. So when you are trying to work through these problems quickly, writing it in shorthand, kind of like I did here, with just the parts um, of the amino acid that protonate and deprotonate, can be really useful. However, if your if your professor really wants you to write everything out, make sure that you have those amino acids memorized. And that's all that I have today for isoelectric point titration curves.